hope you're all doing well and you're having a great weekend. Um, before we start off with today's lesson, I wanted to quickly see if any of you remember last week's memory verse. If you do, shout it to the screen. I'm going to be listening. Some of you have it, some of you not so much. So as a little reminder for all of you who don't remember, the memory verse was found in Leviticus 19 verse 2 and it says, Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Easy peasy. Hope you remember it for next week. Okay, so before we move on to today's lesson, I wanted to quickly check out all those cool crafts that you guys did last week. So let's see. See if you can spot yours here on the screen now. Amazing guys, well done, it all looks so great. Well done to all of you who did the craft. And for those of you who didn't get a chance to, don't stress, you can do this with craft. You can see how that one turns out. Cool guys, so for today's lesson, what we're actually gonna be speaking about is God, surprisingly. Hello. So, I have a very important question to ask all of you, and that is, what do you think God is like? If I had to answer this question, I would probably say God is kind. God is giving. Maybe God is understanding. Maybe God is helpful. Those are some of the things I can think of off the top of my head. And I just wanted to point out that in the Bible, it actually says that God is love. And that's what we're going to be speaking about today. We're going to be speaking about how God is love. So guys, for today's lesson, we have a special memory verse. Um, and I have cool and easy way for you to remember it and it actually has to do with our hands. So what we're going to do is I'll do it first and then I want you to try it. It makes sense, okay? It may look weird, but it makes sense and it may help you remember it. Okay, so it's found in Psalms 147, 11, 147 verse 5. So let's all do that together. Are you ready? It's found in Psalms 147 Verse 5. One more time. Psalm 147, verses 5. Excellent. Okay. And that scripture verse actually says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Let's break it down for us, okay? Let me break it down for you. So it's Psalm 147, verse 5. And it says, Great is our Lord. He is mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. How simple is that? I even gave you some actions. So hopefully you remember this one for next week. Let's go over it one more time. Psalm 147 verse 5. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Easy. I want to see if you remember it next week. I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be looking out for, for who remembers it. Okay. So before we move on, I actually wanted to break down one of the words in that scripture verse. And that's the word that is limit. I don't know if everyone understands what that means. But basically, when we say that God's understanding has no limit, it means that God understands everything. There is nothing that God doesn't understand. His understanding goes on and on and on. And honestly, He knows Everything. You know, some of you think you're a know-it-all. I think I'm a know-it-all sometimes. God is a know-it-all. God knows everything and His understanding is limitless. There is no limit to His understanding. So let's start off with this little scenario. You're at school. It's a nice day. You're walking around. Maybe you're walking with your friends. Maybe you're sitting in class before it starts. Maybe you're on the field playing with your friends. You're at break. And someone comes up to you and says something nasty or they hit you. Shouldn't be hitting people. So let's say someone even starts a rumor about you. How are you going to react in that situation? I know how I'm going to react and it's not pretty and it's definitely not how God would want me to react in that situation. We need to learn to forgive these people. We need to learn to forgive about them and forget about what they've done. And I know that that is super hard. But who remembers 
that Jesus died on the cross for us. I'm sure a lot of you remember that because that's a story that we hear about a lot of the time. So Jesus died for our sins. And you know, Jesus is the Son of God and God sent His one and only Son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can live eternally in heaven one day with God. Now, can you imagine how much God loves us to be able to give up His one and only Son as a, as a sacrifice for our sins. That must be a crazy amount of love. I think a way for us to understand how much God loves us is to take the one thing in this world that you love most. Maybe it's a toy. Maybe it's, I don't know, your phone, your PlayStation, your whatever you want to choose. Okay? You're going to take the amount of love that you have for that object, that person, that thing, and you're going to times it by one million, billion, gazillion, quadrillion, however much you wanna you wanna times it by. And I know that some of those words do not make sense, but however much you wanna times it by. And the amount that you are left with still doesn't compare to how much God loves us. God loves us even more than that amount. How insane is that? I just can't wrap my brain around it. When Jesus died on the cross for us, he didn't get to pick and choose who he died for. He didn't get to say, mm, I pick you, you, you at the back, you over here, and you with the red shirt. I'm gonna die for you guys, the rest of you. Sorry, he didn't say that. Jesus died for everyone. He died for those who hurt him. He died for those who were jealous of him, who said nasty things about him, who might have hit him. He died for everyone, the good and the bad. And he died for those people because he loves them so much. And I think God is the greatest example of love that we can live by. I think all of us need to be more like God and we need to love people even if they do stuff that hurts us or embarrasses us or makes us angry. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves, has been born of God and knows God. And anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. And then later on in that verse, it goes on to say that perfect love drives out all fear. And that means that one day we can be so excited because we're gonna be in heaven. We don't have to worry about not going to heaven one day because if we love God and we truly mean it from the bottom of our hearts, with every fiber in our body, if we truly, truly mean that we love God and we put Him first over everything and we ask for His forgiveness and we ask Him to forgive us of all the sins that we've done, if, if we truly, truly mean that, then we can have eternal life with God one day. How crazy is that? I know last week you guys learned about some of the commandments and I'd like to touch on one or two of those because they tie in beautifully with today's lesson. So the first commandment I want to speak about is the one that says, we must love God. That is a very important one and that's what we've been saying in today's lesson. And then later on with these commandments, God says that you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now your neighbor is not just Jack and Susie who live next door, no, 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 no. Your neighbors are all the people who are around you, whether that be at school, at church, when you're at the shops, strangers, you know, you need to love these people because that's exactly what God would do. God loved everyone, no matter who they were, no matter where they came from, and no matter what they did. And I know that that's super hard to do. Sometimes it's really hard to love someone who's done you wrong, who's been mean to you, who said bad things about you. And it's sometimes also really hard to love a stranger. I know, it is really hard. But that's where our scripture verse, which was Psalm 147 verse 5, that's where our scripture verse ties in beautifully with today's lesson. If we go back to that, it says, Great is our God and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Which means God understands that it's hard to love these people. And God understands that sometimes people say mean things and it's hard for you to get over it. But that's where you need to just pray for these people. And you need to say, Jesus, please help me find a solution to this problem that I'm having. I can't forgive Jason for hitting me on the playground. That's too difficult. That's too difficult. He hit me. I'm in pain. You know, he embarrassed me in front of everyone. No, 
No, you don't go about that situation like that. You just have to pray and you have to say, Jesus, I know that what Jason did was wrong and I know that you would forgive him in this situation. So please, Lord, please help me love Jason even though he was mean to me. Okay, so for today's object lesson, I've just set up a few things over here. And I'm just going to walk you through what each of these things means for me. So in this little bowl here, this little container, I have a little bit of water. Now the water that's inside here actually represents our love. Okay, so I need you to remember that, that this water represents our love. And the sponge is your life. Okay, I need you to remember that. These two cups over here, we're only going to be using one for now, but both of these cups represent people. They represent the people that we interact with every day. That could be mom, dad, brother, sister, school friends, maybe some other family members. You can let this represent whoever it is you want this to represent. Okay, so in Psalm 136, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His love endures forever. Now, His love endures forever means that His love never ends. And we know that God is love. And He has so much love to give us. So in this container, I have some water. And obviously, like I said before, this water and this container represents our love. Now, I actually haven't filled it all the way to the top because let's be real, guys. We have other emotions within us. We're human, you know, we don't, we're not only full of love, there could be some anger, some hatred, maybe even some greed. So I didn't fill this all the way to the top because we're not all love. We are not God, okay? So let's see what happens when we take our lives and we take the love that's inside of us and we give it to other people. Let's see how much love we can give out.
<laughs> this week we're going to make a rocket bookmark. Okay, so if you look in your pack, you'll see a piece of colored paper and a printed out rocket. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to get a grown up to help you cut the pieces out and you can color them any color you want. Okay, so I'm gonna cut mine. Okay, so what you want to do is move this aside. With the paper that we got in the pack, we're going to make a square. So you want to take this end here and take it up right to this part here is even. Okay, and then we're gonna fold it out nicely. Okay, and then we're gonna cut along this line here. If you can't cut it yourself, ask somebody to help you. So if you open this up, you can see we have a nice square. So we're going to pull that up there. And we're going to bring this piece down here to the middle. Once we folded that, it should look like that, like a pyramid. So we're going to take this end and we are going to hold it like that and then we're going to tuck this little piece inside so you should have that okay we're gonna do the same on the other side there we go and then tuck this one inside here and then you should have something that looks like a diamond and on the other side a triangle you guys are worried about the packages they've all been sanitized and they've been packaged most of the stuff are sealed so you don't really have to stress about them so let's make our rocket ship this is the body of the rocket and this is the head we're going to put some glue or thread, whatever you guys have, and we're going to stick the head on the body. Like so. Wow. Then we're going to take these little circles. They're the windows. Okay, there we have some windows. Perfect. And then we have this. This looks like a little bush but it's actually a frame so make sure you color this like reddish and then you have this little piece of fire I'm sure you'll be wondering what it is so you're gonna stick that fire on top of our other fire because <laughs> you need lots of firepower and then we're gonna stick this behind our rocket okay look it looks like something's happening then we are going to stick the bottom of our ship, the bottom, and these triangles are the wings. Okay, we're also going to stick them behind in a right angle. Okay, there's my rocket. Darcy! <laughs> okay. Then we're going to stick our rocket on the side that has the little pyramid. So you're gonna stick it on that little bend there. Let's see. Just put some glue in a line a little bit. Chantal. <laughs> there we go. And there we have our bookmark. Okay? And then you're gonna let that dry. Make sure you color your rocket before you start sticking the glue and stuff. I haven't colored mine. Okay, so we have our book. Let's see how it works. So this is the page that we are reading. And we're going to stick our bookmark like so. And voila, it works. Bye kids. I hope you enjoy next week's meeting. And uh, stay safe.